Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of AWP, the Anything Wrestling Podcast. Thank you once again for joining us on another edition, another quarantine edition, actually. Uh, we thank you, everyone who's tuning in. We are back here today. We got the whole band back together. It is time to discuss... The next WWE quarantine pay-per-view, the second official quarantine pay-per-view. Uh, but before we get into that, guys, how we doing? Great. Um, <laughs> well, you know, quarantine times are almost getting back to normal life slowly. Hopefully, slowly to make sure everything goes well. Uh, quick shout out to... Christina Pazitsky and Tom Segura. You guys Who? think wrestling's fake? Well, that's no. aggressive. I feel like I know Tom's name. Who is he? Tom Segura. He's some stupid comedian. He 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 literally went on his podcast with this chick and said, like they just bash all over that wrestling's fake. Ah, uh, that's right. Tom Who Segura. does that remind and me of? Everybody that thinks wrestling's fake. No, I think he was getting Ronda. Thank but. you. <laughs> no, oh yeah, but no. Here's the thing, like just. I, I've already seen it sent to me and posted everywhere. It's just like, I'm over it. They're idiots. They don't know what wrestling is. And, like, everybody's gone on their case from uh, Dolph Ziggler to some of the wrestlers in TNA to some of the wrestlers in Ring of Honor. Well, the thing, the thing about all these people who feel the need to take it upon themselves to talk shit about wrestling are the people who can't just let people enjoy stuff. Like, mind your own goddamn business. We, we enjoy it. It's a storytelling uh, thing. It's a TV show. And it's a show that we, that we enjoy sometimes. Uh, <laughs> Once but in a blue moon. That doesn't mean you need to go out of your way to be a dick about it. Exactly. I mean, I don't know if anybody knows this. I mean, the, I, I may be breaking the internet by saying this, but do you guys realize that movies are fake? They're not real. What? what? I, I know, I know. Trust me. I mean, I just discovered this recently too, and it kind of wait. broke my heart. Um, wait, wait. I thought that Sean Bean just kept getting revived. Oh, you thought Sean Bean was getting revived? I thought Leonardo DiCaprio kept on getting revived. I mean, <laughs> after Titanic, I was like, Jack, she let go, but you keep on coming back. So, I'm just saying. I thought he drowned in the ocean. Then he was put in a nut house. My God, the man's been through a lot. I thought it all really happened. Well, you know, I guess we can't say that Jack is in the box. Ugh. Like the coffin, because he never dies. Um, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we jump too far into it, let's do, let's do a quick plug for the other programs that we record and that you record. Uh, make sure that if you're listening, you may also enjoy video games. Check out BA Select Start, also on the channel, as well as Anything But Everything, which is about anything but everything. Uh, typically focuses on psych- psychology and the inner mechanism, uh, the inner, oh geez, what's the word, workings of people. Yes, thank you so much for those plugs, Dan. And if you want to catch Money in the Bank or any other previous WWE pay-per-view... Uh, or Along from, with your mother tomorrow. That's right, yeah, because it is Mother's Day. You can do so only on the WWE Network for a non-negotiable but very reasonably price of just only $9.99. Wait, $9.99. I kid you not, I'm not talking about double digits. It's not $10. So you mean to tell me you don't have to put down $1,000? Or $1 million. That's right, but just only $9.99. Consequently, the cost of a moderate bouquet of flowers for your mother. Uh, not if you get it tomorrow. Uh, well, no, that's fair. Yes, let's do so. Ladies and gentlemen, here are our predictions. Here is our preview of Money in the Bank 2020 match breakdown. Guys, take it away. All right. Well, starting off, the, well, I mean, I don't know if it's starting off the card, but we're going off this list. Starting off the predictions, we've got 
the kickoff show featuring Jefferson Hardy and, uh, and, and what was his name? Antonio Cesaro? Hashtag. Bush Cesaro. Anyway, so <laughs> has there has there been any real in, like interaction between these two at all? I know we just had Sheamus versus Jeff, but... Yeah, um... Or is this just a thrown-together match, too? Well, it's a thrown-together match, but it seems like the rumor that's really making the rounds, and for anybody who's been seeing those package videos on SmackDown, it seems like they're really hyping up Jeff for this very intense push that's, that, that's, that's to come uh, in the very near future. Dare I say, probably over the next few weeks or months. Um... But see, once again, execution is everything. You have Jeff make his first live appearance on SmackDown. He was dealing with Sheamus, and now all of a sudden he's feuding with Cesaro, which makes no sense to me. It's like, and he, and on the pre-show, mind you, or it's, or I, I, I think it's going to be on the pre-show. Yeah, it's, it's kickoff match. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't, know, I don't know if maybe they're going by association, given the fact that they used to be the bar. And so, oh, well, if he faces Cesaro, he's Sheamus' buddy. And if he beats Cesaro, then, ooh, that's going to really grind Sheamus'. G- I, don't, I don't know. Um, but odds are Jeff will probably pick up the win in this match. Yeah. I, I, have, I have no dog in this race because, one, no buildup. Two, it was announced earlier today, like literally 12 hours ago. I mean, there was... The build-up saying that there was rumors that Jeff Hardy was going to get a strong push ever since, you know, Brother Matt left, and we have Brother Nero, so... Now, now don't get me wrong, I, I, think it'll, I think it'll be a fair match. They're both, they're both, even though Jeff's a little older now, they're still both talented guys. I will say this, I don't know if you guys caught this, but when Jeff beat up Sheamus on SmackDown... I could almost feel it in his movement that he had slowed down just a little bit. I don't know if he was maybe holding his back or, or if... I know, obviously, he just did the swanton bomb, which is obvious. Your body's coming down on the guy. But it just... It seemed like something was off. Like, it wasn't the Jeff Hardy of old. Maybe it's father time. Maybe it's injuries catching up. I don't know. But it seems like Jeff has just taken a very small step back. I'm still going to give this to Jeff, though. I mean, they believe me, the push for Cesaro is way overdue. But I, I could probably see something building up. Maybe, like, you can eventually have, like, a triple threat between Cesaro, Sheamus, and Jeff. I mean, kind of odd to just throw these two into a match out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, I'm going to call this one Jeff Hardy with the twist of fate, though. I'm not. I don't think he. I, I don't think he's gonna uh, do a swanton in a kickoff match. Yeah, my my prediction is Jeff too. Even though it hurts me to say, but going with Jeff. So let's move a full hut to the next uh, non-built up. Let's just throw two people names in a hat. See what we get. Match. We have a. Uh, our truth, your twenty four seven. Oh, your former. Sorry, former. I forget who has the belt nowadays. Right. Oh God. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you why. I oh God that. But you have your former twenty four seven forty eight seven seven eleven television European I ninety five five North South East West forwards backwards. Yeah. One way is uh, Mr. 305. 205. 705. Okay, are you guys just shouting out different area codes? Yes. Okay. B11. I26. 247. G43. Anyway. You're so close to a bingo there. Yeah, we don't have time for that, though. Is this a throwaway, too? I mean, there's no build-up. Wait, who's his opponent? MVP. Oh. Um. I think so. I think I think MVP is going to gonna pick up the win in this just because 
our truth is one of those guys at this point who's uh, even if they're giving him a, a pseudo push, uh, he's still a, he's still a jobber at heart. But I don't think it hurts him to lose anymore. No, wait, wait. You said he's now like a job or a pseudo push. Would you want an actual push for truth? Like maybe one more? Yes. And in what regards? Like both. No, being WWE champion. Oh, you serious? I wouldn't put our truth well, in the middle picture. Not now. right now, but if we can uh, go back to 2011 when he was just doing that little Jimmy, little Jimmy shtick. That was what. That was the time to pull the trigger. But Cena doing what he does best. Anyway. They're buddies, man. I don't know what you're talking about. No, but like he means the whole thing with John Cena and the shovel and the fact that, you know. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm aware, but they're mm-hmm. pals. I don't think he would have necessarily buried our truth. Anyway, I get your point. But, uh, yeah. M- MVP. MVP's my choice. Yeah, I agreed. Okay, then. So, next up, now that I've navigated away from the page, we got the SmackDown Tag Championship. What? No, don't. (laughs) No, you said navigate away from Paige. I would never. Uh, SmackDown (laughs) Tag Championship match. Uh, The New Day defending against The Miz and John Morrison. Uh, the Forgotten Sons, and Lucha House Party. Didn't you so, forget a tag team? No, it's just a fatal forward. I know, that was the joke, Forgotten Sons. Uh, um, uh, who cares? I mean... Well, my, my, my joke would have been like, oh, I, I, I forgot about the Forgotten Sons since I barely remember their, their startup to begin with. Uh, and I and, think... And just, just to make sure... Are you guys both aware that Jay Uso is injured and that's why the Usos are not currently in the program? Yeah. Well, I mean, even with that, you think about it, Lucha House Party, again, I, I talked about this in our Heart and Soul rant, one week they're there, then for the next two weeks they're gone, then they reappear and get a victory, then you have Forgotten Sons, who, part of the pun, had a very forgettable debut. Um... Miz and Morrison are hanging off of a catchphrase. Uh, new day is new day, but they really need to spice things up. I'm sorry, it's it's garbage. It's garbage momentum. Not to say it's going to be a garbage match, but everything leading into it is just, it's useless. Didn't we technically have this match on Friday on SmackDown? Did we? Like, well, well, didn't they all wrestle each other this past Friday? It was a six-man tag team match. You know the typical thing. Uh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Miz and Morrison because they seem to be favoring those two uh, as of recent. So I'm gonna go with Forgotten Sons because I don't know what the point of bringing them up was otherwise. Hold on. Uh... I'm going to side with Sean. I'm going with the Miz and Morrison. At this point, it's just... Yeah. Hey, hey. Oh, oh. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> they are... I mean, the thing the thing about the tag titles is it really is... You know, we're back to, to playing hot potato. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let the potato cool. Let, um, let the potatoes hit the floor. All right, so next up, we have the SmackDown Women's Championship on the line with your role model, your annoying role model. Not when it comes to hair. Versus uh, all of a sudden... I want to speak to your manager. (laughs) Please don't. Not a Karen joke. It's a Bailey joke. I know, but still, I've heard enough Karen jokes this whole week. Uh, versus uh, all of a sudden she has a voice again she has personality somewhat Tamina I will say this 
Uh, contrary to popular belief, we talked about giving women wrestlers a chance. I'm glad they're giving Tamina a chance because, after all, she is a veteran. She's been there for a good while. Um, has never had championship gold. Um, having her defeat Bailey is a little eh. It's like, okay, why do that? Um, I say Bailey walks away with this one, but that does not mean we will we won't get a good match. I think Tamina can go. It's just when the right time comes, uh, specifically after when we get the Bailey and Sasha feud. I wouldn't mind if Tamina was a contender for the women's championship, but now it just seems like, eh, like Lacey Evans to me would have been a better um, match to have against Bailey rather than Tamina at this point in time, at least. Now, now my my issue with that is the fact that Lacey, Lacey never got her title, right? She's never won the belt. No. No. I would rather see it play uh, play out like this and. God again. God bless the fact that they're giving Tamina a spotlight because she hasn't had one. She hasn't had one in the what twelve years she's been in the company. I don't know how long she's been. Yeah, around. ballpark. Ten, ten twelve. Um, but I would ra- like I would rather this be used as sort of an experience match for her, like being in that spotlight, not learning how to wrestle. Uh, and then we go on to Bailey Sasha. Um, I would like to see Sasha take the belt off Bailey, Lacey take the belt off Sasha, and then Tamina comes back as a heel, and she maybe gets her gets a title reign off of uh, Lacey in a program between the two of them. You could even play around because I know they're kind of doing Tamina and Lacey versus Sasha and Bailey right now as like the two baby faces against the two heels. I wouldn't mind if. Those four kind of are at the forefront of the of all those title changes where, you know, there might be a point where, you know, uh, Lacey is defending her title against the Sasha. And, oh, to, Bailey's coming in to interfere. Tamina comes out to, you know, fight off uh, Bailey, And then, oh, super kicks Lacey and costs her, you know, the championship. Um, and again, going back to your point, turning her heel... Uh, but no, yeah, I think that would be a very good thing to experiment with for sure. So wait, wait, okay. So before I give my analysis, Sean, you picked Bailey for this, right? Yes. And Dan, you picked. I'll I'll also pick Bailey. Okay. So I'm gonna continue the ladder there. I'm I'm all in on Bailey for this. Um, I don't want to ask credit for me not not getting. Okay. Sorry, I was just going to say, I will play devil's advocate for one second and say that I could see there being a small chance that they use this as an, as a way to give Tamina a title run, throw her, throw her a bone, freeing Bailey up to just have a feud with Sasha that doesn't have to focus on the belt. But I think the, the underlying concept was supposed to be Sasha wants, wants the title. Right. So, yeah. Anyway, go ahead. What were you saying? I was going to say, like, I would let Bailey win just maybe we can finally get something out of it. Or, not to discredit Tamina, let Tamina win. Let Bailey get the belt back. And then finally get the true rooting of Sasha. Like, you know what? I'm tired of this. I'm tired of hanging around like a sidekick. I was supposed to raise up my star power. I was supposed to be you know, the right star, not you. I want what's going to get me there. I want the belt. And we finally get what everyone's been wanting and clamoring about for. The four horsewomen. Well, not that, but before that. Hashtag push Cesaro? After that. Well, in, in the middle of that. Being on the same page? <laughs> I give up. Sure. Never give up. I'll get you a John Cena shirt. Um, I'll only accept if it's hustle, loyalty, respect, and NWO. For life? So for life. That's too sweet. Let's move forward. Let's do Damn. it, please. All right. So from here, it jumps to. 
to Braun Strowman defending his, uh, I don't want to say newly won because it's been a minute now, but newly won Universal Championship versus Bray Wyatt. Now, this article is seemingly suggesting, and I have I honestly haven't been following this one too closely, is suggesting that this is going to be Bray, not The Fiend. Fair. Um, that seemed to be the vibe you guys have gotten as well. Yes, because The Fiend has been making more of an appearance, or I'm sorry, Bray Wyatt has been making more of an appearance than The Fiend has. Um, and I will say this, so far on this card, this is the one feud that has had the closest thing to a proper build-up, has had the closest thing to some backstory. I really like the dynamic of Bray constantly being like, Braun, you can always come back, just give me that title, and come back to your rightful owner, and Braun being resistant and going, nope, you know, you don't own me, I'm not with you, I'm not about what happened, you know, a few years ago, um... I like it, but once again, let's not forget that um, Braun is in this situation highly just because of circumstance. We were originally supposed to get Roman in this position. So, again, I don't know. I'm kind of a little uneasy about this one just because of what they did with The Fiend originally, uh, feeding him to Goldberg and all that. I'm just hoping that Bray has a lot of say in the outcome of this match. Or the, the booking, or the, yeah, because you know they're always saying, "Oh, he has a lot of creative control of his character." I really hope that in in this feud, he he has that as well. It would only make it would make sense if, as long as he does have the control. Yeah, yeah, but then Goldberg say, happened. I would say it's it's probably pretty pretty fair to bet that he is going to try, like for all intents and purposes probably be the booker of the match um and then he'll he'll work with uh with braun because i'm sure that they both want to put on something good uh but to boil this all down i i braun's gonna win this match and then we'll see where it goes from there that's my prediction i mean we could essentially have let's say braun beats bray he beat bray white he didn't beat the fiend and usually yeah. the effect the fiend offers is the fiend wins and turns his victims back to their original roots. Yeah. But we could see this building up to like June if it's stopping ground. Maybe even SummerSlam. Because you should give Braun a little bit of a of a run with at least this title and then have the fiend win it. But do you think uh, yeah. they will? I, I, think, I think they like Braun enough to give him at least a couple of defenses. Do they? Um, they started know. offering him championships. He got the IC belt, and then he got this belt. Well, again, I hate to go back to it, but he only got the belt because of circumstance. Well, yeah, but at that point, like, I don't, I don't, my, my whole point is I don't think they're going to mistreat the guy and say, look, we just needed it, like, other you could have picked anybody at that point. You could have just had the fiend come back. At, I mean, I guess not because you had um, the match with John. But you could have, you could have literally thrown anybody at Goldberg at that point. The, well, I don't know if you guys remember the rumors. The rumor was to throw Jeff at Goldberg. Jeff was supposed to be the one to win the Universal Belt. That's that's actually correct. I remember that. And now he's on the kickoff show. How far we've come. But man, here's the thing. Cause you there's, gotta there's... work him up. What? I said because you've got to work him up. You've got to you've got to build him up for the uh, the uh, eventual championship scramble match. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> it always goes back I mean, to that. Those are fun to watch, but Jesus no. <laughs> In all honesty, though, um, I think. I... Braun is going to win, but with circumstance. I don't think we're going to see a definitive win. It's going to be shenanigans or circumstance or something. So we're all in on Braun? Yes. Yes. Okay. But he beats Bray Wyatt. He doesn't beat the Fiend. Yes. 
Okay. I, I do want to just comment on that. I do think it's interesting that the approach so far has kind of been uh, that Bray Wyatt is the he's the embodiment or the physical manifestation of the 50-50 booking that he is so fond of because of the fact that you have... And I mean, it's even kind of been the same thing with Finn Balor. But this one's, I think, more clear, more clear cut is that if, if it's going to be uh, Wyatt's neighborhood versus somebody, he's going to lose. But the Fiend... <laughs> The Fiend will win, but uh, the referee stops the match. Mm-hmm. Let's not bring up that old Too late. Old, old homage. Anyway, let's move on. We have uh, your Monday Night Messiah. More aggressive lately. Seth Rollins. Sako. Sako Rollins, young. A.K.A. I am not hosting Sunday Church because I am going to face off against Drew, the Scottish psychopath, McIntyre. McIntyre. WWE Championship. Um, I think this is, it's, it's been a solid build. I think Drew looks like a monster, and I I believe I said this once he won the championship. I don't want to see a clear-cut white meat baby face. We still need the ass-kicking Drew McIntyre, not one who, you know, uh, smiles and tries to do the right thing. Like, no, we needed that aggressive Drew McIntyre, which we're getting. Yeah, like, I think Drew has control right now of his character. Yeah. Um, and Seth is, is doing what he needs to do. I thought we were breaking away from the whole Buddy Murphy thing, but apparently Buddy Murphy made an appearance again, so I guess not. But, um, I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna throw it out there. I think maybe Buddy Murphy becomes a reason as to why Drew McIntyre retains and Seth Rollins loses the match. So that's my prediction. I, I don't think that Buddy's gonna cost... Uh, I almost called him Sean. Uh, <laughs> Not there I don't yet. Think he, I don't think he's going to cost <laughs> Seth the, uh, the, t- the, the match. He might be out there, but I don't think he's going to cause the loss. I think Drew's going to overcome the interference. Very well. And, and I agree. I, I think that uh, Drew has been, has been booked pretty well up to this point. And I, uh, I, I've, I've enjoyed most of his stuff. Yes. I, I'm excited to see him continue to develop. I, I don't think, he, I don't think he is in a position where he should lose the title for a while. Um, and I also don't have, I don't have a problem with the Buddy Murphy thing because of the fact that the whole thing with Seth is he's supposed to be Jesus. He's supposed to be cross Jesus. Um, he needs a follower. I would rather we keep it limited to just these two, though, because I don't think... A- no offense to AOP. I don't think they really brought anything <laughs> that discernible to the table. Look, Seth just traded up on security. We saw what he had with Jamie Noble and... What was the other guy? <laughs> Joey Mercury? Yeah, he traded up to AOP. So it was J. It was J and J. Then it was AOP. What is it going to be now? It, it, it should just be him and Buddy. But I would think maybe I'm not trying to call Buddy Murphy a Judas, but it's going to happen. Um, I mean, we do have both of them on the roster again, so maybe he go, he upgrades again to M and M. Oh no! I was literally going to say that like a minute ago. But yeah, I'm in on Drew winning this match. I I think it'll be a clean win, and maybe Buddy starts seeing like, is should I really follow him because he's not gaining traction? Yeah. But we're finally into the ladder matches. Dan, what is our next match? Oh, perfect. So the first one 
we've got here is the women's ladder match, which is featuring, oh, come on, <laughs> which is featuring, we'll get there, we'll get there someday, okay, Nia Jax, <laughs> uh, sorry, Oscar, Shayna Baszler, yeah. Madam Evans, Carmella, and Dana Brooke. Why? Wow. That, that, you sound so excited about the six entries. Um, I'm just going to throw this in there. Not to disrespect her. It's not her fault. As a matter of fact, I'm hearing that she's one of the most hardest working uh, people in the company. Setting up the ring, taking down the ring, and trying to master her craft. That's all great, but when you have someone whom I've said it before, I think the last time that we saw Dana Brooke doing anything of relevance was last year's Money in the Bank match. So you have her up here one night, then she does nothing of relevance for 364 days, and now all of a sudden she's taking up a sixth spot. So Well, hold on. Let's dial back for one second. She was supposed to be in the women's title match at Mania. And what happened? She got, she got sick. <laughs> oh. So they so they, they took her out of the match, but she was supposed to she was supposed to be in there too. Well, I mean, they they had a year to you know do something with her, and everything that she does is either just last minute stuff improvised or a few that is really not going anywhere. Well, the booking's also been short sighted all year. Yeah. So. That that's when that and that's my point. It's not her. I don't I don't you know I don't have anything against her. It's just the the the, the whole booking. It, it makes no sense. But I mean, on the flip side, who would you rather have in that spot, man? Yeah, Rose, uh, Lana, I was, I was about to ask that. <laughs> like, who would you throw in? Uh, honestly, one person that I'm hoping get some airtime and has some character development, Sonia Deville. Okay. You, you kinda well oh yeah she is right down there like Yeah. Especially since they're not do I mean, I'm assuming she's gonna end up interfering somehow in the men's match due to Otis being in there, but Yeah, I mean they're they're gonna beat, you know, Maddie Mandy Rose versus Sonia Deville to death at this point. I'm already over it. Like I, I am too. Been, no joke. I would have been fine if the the match at Mania was the end of it all. Yeah. Wait, we're still on it. Yeah. Yeah. You, you had you had Mania. No, that was my. Oh, that was so my you point. Into it the other day. Oh, like you weren't paying attention. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, like, to I'll answer be, both I'll of your guys' question, uh, if we were to put somebody in there whom I would want to see get that. That opportunity would be Sonya Deville. Again, again, nothing against Dana Brooke. I have nothing against her. Um, but I would just rather have someone who's actually had some air time and has been doing something. Okay. Well, well minus Dana's lack of hard work or non-presence in wrestling. Out of the, Let's just eliminate her out of the equation. Out of the five... You guys, we've all made choices. Now, let's discuss what the other four that we didn't choose could have benefited if we had chosen them. Like, where where, where do you guys see Carmella going if she had become his three-time money in the bank? Wait, did she win twice? Yeah. They kind yeah. of, they, they kind of Stevie Richards the first time because of who got the briefcase for her. Uh, um, and well, then, they had to do the match over. Yeah, but see, again, every time they do something with the women's revolution, there's always a twist. There's always someone to kill the momentum. But anyway, um, Carmella, again, victim of not being booked. Like, when you just slap her on there, it's like, okay, if she wins, okay. And, but, she, she, great competitor. Yeah. Great competitor. Yeah, 
Yeah, you can't say she's not a good competitor. Yeah, I think that her and R Truth gelled very well together, and it actually brought out a lot of her character with the whole dance break and uh, all the comic relief stuff she was doing with the twenty four seven championship. But um, at this point, it's like okay, then what? Um, there's a lot of in inconsistency, which is why I have a hard time thinking if she gets the briefcase, what do we do? So. All right, so this is, this is why I'm going to mention not the two that we picked. I'm going to mention everybody that obviously we, we, we don't want Fair. booked winning. So then we got Asuka. What direction do we go with her? Oh, man. Um, at this point, any direction, please. Um, multiple. Should bring her back to SmackDown? Take her back to NXT, bro. Like, at this point, please, just take her back to NXT. Um... Um, for what you're gonna set, you're gonna put her on a goddamn program with Charlotte he's gonna stick her on her well like, you yeah, know damn the only reason I might throw her back down there and this is again steering into a bunch of nonsense is pair her with EO for a minute no well That's I'm sorry I'm, Dan I was just gonna say the closest thing of relevance that Asuka has done is Kabuki Warriors which I'm sorry to say I don't think ever hit the ground running. I'm just, I'm sorry, it didn't. In my I eyes, agree. it didn't. In my <laughs> eyes. I, I love both women, but I agree. Um, and, uh, I mean, I don't know if you were being sarcastic or if you were serious, but, yeah, go back to NXT. I would love to see Charlotte versus Asuka come full circle like it should have a year ago. I mean, I the, my whole thing is I would I I would re, like I we still have Rhea just showed back up, so now we're gonna build toward Rhea. I think that I think the next thing we're probably gonna see is probably Rhea, Io, and and Charlotte, which is gonna be a good match. Yeah. But I I, I just I don't know what to do with Oscar right now. I think this match we're gonna see Shayna and Oscar at the top of the ladder at the end. Uh. Going into my my prediction, I think Shane is going to chuck her off the ladder and get the briefcase. But after that, I don't know. I, I I think maybe it's time to I think maybe it's time to repackage Oscar a little bit. Again, anything, anything at this point, please do something. I mean, she's she's a really good competitor, and I mean, Triple H was doing very well with her. Um, you, you could have still struck gold with her on the main roster, but bad booking, bad stories, time after time, year after year, it kind of brings you to this point where it's like, okay, what do, what do we do with her? Which is not a question you should be asking of some, uh, of someone who has, you know, Asuka's stature, really. Okay, so, oh, no, go ahead, Dan. I was just going to say, now, I, based on what we talked about with the, the SmackDown women's title picture... I wouldn't even be against having like muddying that up a little bit more, um, but like because after this, Shayna odds are is going to be fo- trying to focus back on, on Becky again. Um, but I, I mean, at that point, I don't know what to what to really do with Becky. But I wouldn't mind seeing Oscar and Lacey or Oscar and Tamina. Full heel turn for Becky. Full heel turn for Becky. What? Because, well, because we've seen Asuka and Becky lately. I don't need to see that. So put her with some new faces. Yeah. No, but uh, th- that's what I was saying when you mentioned Shayna. But we'll get to her. Um, then the other choice that we didn't choose, Naya. Where, where do you guys go with her? Um, For the sake of... Because uh, Naya at this point has kind of made a name for herself, which is why I gave it to the person that I gave it to, uh, to win the match. Um, as long as Naya doesn't open her mouth too much, and you just you you give us a dominant heel, you give us the giant of the women's division. And I'm I'm not trying to body shame her. I I, I just I mean, you know, someone as, as an actual heel. Yes. Like, Full heel, blown character, doesn't seek much, just takes out their aggression on the entire division. Yes, uses her weight to her advantage. Um, 
I mean, for that reason, that's why I didn't give it to Naya because Naya could still continue mon- after Money in the Bank, and sh- and she'll she'll be okay. She'll be fine. I have no concerns about that, um, as long as she gets booked properly. So that's just those are my sentiments. So so that takes me to asking Dan why he didn't pick Naya and why he chose Shane. Well, for, so because the the way I see it, Naya is more likely in, just in this match to be the powerhouse. I expect that she's gonna have the ladder and she's gonna slam it into people. She's gonna do the helicopter spot, and then she'll probably get. Uh, she'll. I'm anticipating that she'll be on the apron while a ladder's across to the barricade, and she'll get knocked off the apron through that ladder. Well, and that's gonna remember that's gonna Dan. Her. Remember, Dan, we're, this is not in a traditional ring. We're, they're going up to the corporate tower. Oh, you're right. Say. Well, you know what? I heard Vince is toying with throwing somebody off the fucking building. So oh, maybe hell it's not. no. <laughs> no, they, they've already done the spot for it. Like, I don't know if they're still deciding to air Money in the Bank live tomorrow, but if they already recorded it, the odds are someone's coming off the building. Well, and both of these matches are happening at the same time. Did exactly. You, are you both aware of that? Yeah. Yeah, I, I I totally forgot about that. That's what kind of makes the next match interesting when we get there. But we still haven't talked about... Well, Sean, you are kind of... Two, I, 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 I don't remember what I saw. Are there two rings on the roof? Mm, I think there is. I think there's one ring, and there's two briefcases holding uh, that are suspended above the ring. Oh, that's going to be a hot mess when they all get up there. <laughs> I wouldn't... I, I, here's the thing. I'm I'm just... I'm going to throw this out there. I wouldn't mind if there comes to a point where Anaya Jax is on the ladder and then a male competitor climbs on the other side of the ladder and they start trading punches. Because I know they they were trying to experiment with Nia Jax versus Dean Ambrose about a year back. Um, you want to talk breaking boundaries? Let's 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 give it a shot and see what happens. Well, what if, and if you what do if that, Naya, Naya has to instigate because the I feel like the man would be up there. He'd be like, "Well, shit, we're we're not even going for the same thing." And she'd be like, "You know what? Screw it. She'll just punch whoever it is." Yeah, exactly. Or she'll mm-hmm. probably punch. Okay, and I have a weird inkling that this will happen. Maybe she'll punch Rey Mysterio and go for the men's money in the bank briefcase if she can't get her own. Can I say something? I would love to see that. I'm not. I mean, I'm not against that, actually. <laughs> She's already been 619 by Ray. I mean, and RKO'd. And super kicked. And eliminated. <laughs> Which, we might as well get into the next match. Uh, it's happening at the same time. Anyway, and, so, I, real quick, before we do that, I picked Shayna. I picked Lacey. Just because, I picked Lacey. Just because someone who's fresh still... And needs something for a push, it's Lacey. Everybody else can, with the exception of Asuka, um, can probably get by not having this briefcase. But I think Lacey really needs it more than ever. I mean, Shayna would be my second pick. But I kind of see Lacey being this year's money in the bank. Yeah. But we'll find out later today. But yeah, let's move on to the men's match. Now that we've gotten our brains on track and we know that everything's happening at the same time. <laughs> it's one Daniel Bryan versus Rey Mysterio versus King Corbin versus Otis versus the returning from the grave, AJ Styles, and against a Lister Black. Do we want to break down individual competitors again or do we want to just... Talk about why we, we should. I mean, we can. Okay, let's go for it. Why? Well, Did we all pick be, person in this one, or I? I think we're all in agreement with the one pick. Okay, so then let's just burn through the other five. Okay, obviously, I'm going to start with this one because I don't think that there is no point for him to win. I'm sorry, he's concerned about his girlfriend right now, uh, Otis. Um. But, but, like I said, I, I I suspect that we might see uh, we might see something where uh, Sonya sneaks in and, and screws with the match. Yeah, you... and that means you're gonna have Mandy come in. What if Mandy helps Otis get his briefcase? She'll probably get taken out by the female competitors who are wrestling at the same time. Um, 
I, I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna have their own spot somewhere downstairs. Yeah, probably. Um, I will just say this: Otis, right now, he's in a storyline, uh, one that is away from the WWE Championship. So there really was no need. It's like, okay, you already have an angle going. We don't need to give you another one. We can give that opportunity to somebody else. And plus, Otis is just getting this push right now. So, you know, I know that, Dan, once again, I'm going to throw back to your idea from quite some time back. I wouldn't mind if somewhere down the line, Mandy and Otis go from being, ador- you know, adored baby faces to absolute heels and really experimenting with that. And Mandy being the valet and Otis being your giant heel. Oh, yeah. Dig it. I'd, wel- I'd welcome the idea. Why not? Mix it up. <laughs> so let, let's move it on to the next person. Would you really want Baron Corbin to fail again at cashing in the money in the bank? Um, again, Corbin... He's doing great, getting natural heel, actually being despised, which is really cool, and the guy can take it. Um, so again, no need. He, he's, he's fine. If he doesn't win this match, I'm, I, he will be doing something during the next pay-per-view. So for that reason, I was like, no, not Corbin. Dan, any thoughts? Um, I, I think he's just there because he's your... Uh, him and Brian and was AJ was AJ in one of these? AJ won his way into it. No, but I mean, has he been in a Money in the Bank before? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you've got like half your people who've been in the match before, and maybe Ray Ray I think was in one too. Yes. Um, or a couple, but you you ha- you have to have a couple of veterans to the match, and then a couple of a couple of wild cards, yeah. and so. I think he's really just there because he's a former winner. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we, like, I'm going to just throw a spot out there. I wouldn't even be surprised if we see him hit hit the end of days on, like, a Lacey Evans in the middle of the match. <laughs> and, and he ends up taking the punch from Nia at the top of the ladder. I'd love to see it. Well, you know, I could bring this back up. But you guys did have... Baron and Lacey teaming up last year. I mean, what if he helps her get her briefcase, and just as he's ready to reach out for his, she hooks him with the woman's right and knocks him off the ladder. Yeah, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tease. It's a it, because you have that sort of flicker where it goes, oh look, she's partnering up with the dude she used to be partnered up with. Oh, but she knocked him the hell out. <laughs> Fair. Maybe possibly off the building. <laughs> Can we stop? Someone's taking, someone's taking that spot. I don't know who is. That's a strong ass punch from from the ladder in the middle of the roof, all the way up the building. <laughs> a future OMG moment in two K twenty two pre order now. <laughs> It'll be like that meme uh, where where something happens and then they just fly through space. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I thought of that right now. <laughs> Uh, moving on, why do we not have Rey Mysterio winning this? I thought about this. I know Rey himself has said that he's on his last run. Um, uh, again, uh, he's been doing nothing of note. Um, if he doesn't win a championship again before he retires, I'm not going to be bitter about it because it's kind of like a been there, done that type of deal. Would it be great to see? Absolutely. Um, but uh, again, Mysterio is established. Uh, and I think that these guys would want nothing more than to let someone who hasn't been there get the opportunity. Yeah. I was gonna ask Dan. <laughs> uh, why? Why don't I think Ray is gonna win? Because I think he's at. The, I think he's at the stage of his career where he's uh, more of a utility player. Yeah. So he's giving back. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I think uh, he's he's working on, on contributing, but getting experiences while preparing to wind down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Um, 
do we add this accomplishment to Daniel Bryan's already impressive resume in the WWE or no? Um, I I kind of flirted with this idea of him possibly winning, um, which I don't think would be a problem. Like I'd be okay with it. Um, it's just this whole thing with Drew Gulak. Uh, I don't know. It's like, it seems like they were going somewhere with that. Then they weren't. Now all of a sudden he wins money in the bank. Uh, okay, sure. Um, I'm not against it. It's just, again, I'm strictly going off of giving opportunity to somebody else. That's it. That just, or, or else if it wasn't for my pick, I would have probably said Daniel Bryan desperately needs it uh, because... Again, not really doing anything of note as of recent. I just don't see what direction we can go in Daniel Bryan. If we're being honest, like I mean, does he have a, a, a reason to go after the belt? Maybe if he was still healed, I would enjoy it. But other than that, uh, uh, he's not my pick. Yeah, it's 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 a weird spot to be in right now, specifically like in this timeline. Yeah, I, I don't know what the what the end end game that makes it sound like his career is coming to a, to an end right now too. Um, I don't know what the end game is for Daniel Bryan. I don't think he, I, I don't think he needs, and I know that that you you kind of want to give your favorites. Uh, all the accolades and be like, oh, he got this and he got that and he got this throughout his career because he was amazing. I don't know that he needs it. Uh, but wait, did, I don't even remember everybody who's won. Did he win at one point? Or yes. Like, yes. The, I'm just thinking for the IC match, aren't I? Are we talking about money in the bank? Yeah, did he win yes. Um, yes. contract? Yes. Who did he cash in on, Randy? Big Show. Oh, that's right, yeah. And then lost it in 12 seconds, which led to, yeah, obviously, uh, you know what. So, see, he, so he's, he's even already won it. Yes. I, uh, I don't think he needs it. I think he is also one of those utility players where he'll be just fine without, without doing it. Plus, I don't see, I don't, I don't know who you put him against of the world champions in yeah. the foreseeable future. Because right now you got Braun, and if he goes again, I guess you could do that. David it's, versus Goliath? Well, no. Uh, once the Fiend finally takes the title off, ah, then, okay. you, then you revisit that. But I I wouldn't. Yeah, I don't think I could see Daniel Bryan leading any one of the Wyatt family. They're all gone. <laughs> Well, if we're if we're considering new ideas, I wouldn't mind if some if let's say if he won, I wouldn't mind a match between him and Drew McIntyre. Yeah, it'd be it'd be an interesting match. I just it that that's a match that makes it a little harder to to pick a to, or to to root for somebody. Yeah. Because we, we, we like both guys, and we, don't, we definitely don't want to take the belt off Drew, and I don't think Brian needs it right now, but you don't want to say, well, <laughs> Daniel Bryan. So, uh, have we talked about everybody at this point? Or Not you? yet. We have two, the two more, two left. Okay, well then I'll, I'll, I'll just tie into, to my, into our selection when we get to the end, so... Well, this man was buried in Tampa, Florida, and he's making his way to Maryland. <laughs> Why and how in the hell did AJ get out of the grave? Um, AJ, once again, is on his last run. He said that he's not resigning. And when you really, like, if you really think about it, it was only a year and a half ago that he had a long title reign. Um... AJ doesn't need the championship to be relevant. Um, I think that without the championship, he can still have great feuds with just about anybody on the roster. So for that reason, I just, it's like, 
AJ will still be AJ with or without the championship. So we're fine. He doesn't he doesn't have to get that briefcase in order to do something of uh, of interest in the forthcoming weeks or months. Now, what if? Here we go. Yeah. What if we revisit what like AJ maybe AJ's on the on the brink of getting the getting the thing. And uh, we suddenly have I don't like that. I would rather it happen somewhere within the building. But what if The Undertaker shows up? Because I, I saw a meme that, that was like, when when, when you uh, just buried AJ Styles alive, and then he shows up on SmackDown or whatever it was, and it's an angry picture of The Undertaker. What if Taker shows up, and he goes, he's like, what the hell are you doing here? You're supposed to be, you're supposed to be dead. <laughs> And then, he threw, and then he throws him off the building. Oh, that's your spot. <laughs> what is, what's, what's up with this throwing off the building business? Vince wants someone off the building. Yeah, because it's because it's all being because it's all produced and it's not like a live action thing. He I got an someone, idea. Why doesn't he wh- someone go off the building? Why doesn't he throw himself off and that way Triple H gets a uh, hold of the company? You can't kill Mr. McMahon again. That's a good point. He survived point. it all. I mean, you could Emperor Palpatine him. I think that'd be fun. You can't kill Vince McMahon again. Then again, I, I mean, think about it. tried to kill Vince McMahon. Then again, I uh-huh. think about it. If he were to even fall off that building, his ego would cushion him and he would be okay. So never mind. Or his grapefruits. Nah. Jesus. Look, if he gets thrown off the building, he'll grab a hold of the brass rings that everyone reaches for, and he'll be fine. Anyway, bringing it bringing it back around for a second. The reason that I brought up the Undertaker thing, whether whether he throws him off the building, building or not, I think that you could have Undertaker make an appearance and have him be sort of like you're supposed to be gone, da 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 da, and that continues their program. And you can do another contrived match where maybe you flip it, and now it's something to AJ's advantage, but Undertaker still beats him. Because I think the, the this is a great time to kind of reinstate The Undertaker's legacy, because then you can have these big cinematic things that don't put as much strain on his body, but... You, allow you to reestablish the mystique of the character before he ultimately would retire also. Yes. I mean, you and, could do that. I think AJ is a great, a great partner to work with for a series of matches to do that. Absolutely. But it, it even it, Undertaker said he chose AJ because he feels like that's one, that's one person he had to cross paths with ever. Two, I like you know. There's always the thing where if Undertaker chooses you, it's because he's ready to put you over. Yeah. You, you know what would be fun for Undertaker if 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 they're still not allowed to have audiences for SummerSlam. We we could always bring Sting back. No oh, God. <laughs> and do a oh, produced Undertaker yeah. Sting match, and then. Will get the match, but then neither guy has to endanger themselves. You know, I actually thought of that. I actually thought of that. I mean, if I hope not, but if we're somewhat in the midst of a pandemic, or if post production matches becomes the style, I think you could do that. You can probably uh, get away with it. Sting and Undertaker in a some type of circumstance, whether it's Boneyard or I don't know. Back I mean, yard you finally get what you wanted since, like, your teen years. Yeah. But Undertaker but, wins, of course. It doesn't, yeah. have, it doesn't have to be a mania. Okay, then I'm flexible. Don't get me wrong. Not having a, a live crowd reaction to that match will, would suck. Yeah, of but, course. But uh, if we want to have it in the books... Uh, anyway, <laughs> due to time, let's keep moving. And now we go to the pick that we're all in unison. Uh, where does this take Alistair Black? Um, 
Again, Alistair, only thing that he's really been doing since on the main roster is someone knock on my door. Okay, nobody's knocking on my door. I'm going to go take the fight to somebody else. It's led to some good matches here and there, and I can appreciate it if it was a short-term type of thing. But it seems like because they didn't really have a plan for him, they just kept on rolling with that, rolling with that. Um, I think this allows for Aleister Black to really tune into that mystique of you don't know when I'm going to cash in, you're not going to see it coming, and before you know it, it's going to be Black Mass, one, two, three, and you're looking at your new champion. I think you can really go a long way with this, and because Aleister Black is a very good performer, um, he seems to be the type of guy where if you just give him enough time with someone, he can give you a great match. Um, and I think that right now is the opportunity. We, you know, we want a fresh face to win this match and go somewhere with it. Alistair Black seems to be your guy. So for that reason, I'm hoping that he wins. And obviously, I'm also on the Alistair Black train for this. The dude has charisma. Uh, I agree that they uh, didn't really do much with the whole knock on my door thing, and I'm fine with that being over. Uh, I know that they have, they didn't they, they sent, sent him through <laughs> Zelina Vega's uh, back direction mm-hmm. where he just, where he just picked all of them off. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're doing an okay job starting to build them up. And I think if you give him that opportunity, and especially if you use this match to establish some spots, then you give him the, the briefcase, and I think he's a great uh, person to put against the Fiend in this, specifically in this climate. Because then you can have a creepy match, you can have him cash in, and you can do some sort of environmental thing. Um, or hold off. But either way, in the long term, I would also get a kick out of seeing him win the win the... Which one is that? The Universal title? Yeah. Yeah. Have him win the Universal title, have Drew retain the WWE title, and then whatever the hell we get to Clash of Champions next, have those two fight each other, and that'd be pretty sick. Yes. I was even going to suggest that you have A-Lister win right now. He still continues a dominant role on Raw, like just like challenging anyone that comes along his path and maybe K save him out of an injury for a while. Like right around let's take him off T V July. Had to serve like a McIntyre with the WWE belt, the fiend with the Universal belt. And after their match at Survivor Series just to see who's the better champion on the better brand. Who comes knocking? Instead of him waiting for someone to knock on his door, he goes knocking into theirs. And let's maybe put him towards the path of the fiend. And let him cash in on the fiend. Create some kind of dark match like the Fun House or something like that heading into TLC or even the Royal Rumble. Why not? Yeah, um... I was just going to say, I wouldn't mind if somewhere down the line, if we get one of those post-production gimmicky matches between Aleister Black and Undertaker, I would love to see those two really tune into their own mystique and give us, you know, sort of that uh, dark versus dark superstar-esque type of match. I I feel like you guys are in this direction of really wanting to eventually get The Undertaker involved either with a or A-Lister, am I right? Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be mad about it, but... No, 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 no reason to be mad, but, like, Undertaker has said that, like, I mean, you guys are aware, of, obviously, of the Last Ride documentary coming out. Yes. Yeah. Um, maybe he wants to choose Alistair as his last opponent. Why not have him be the last one? Not for Mania, but like just a, like a program they can run. Yeah. I don't know. We'll 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 have to see. 
I mean, he he's he's as good of a candidate as the fiend to try and carry on that uh, that dark mystique character. So yeah, and like Alistair has been talking to the right people on how I can continue this progress he's on. Like he he talks to Edge, he talks to uh, even like, hey, how can I keep myself like fresh still? He does want to go on that epic rise to the top. And this is the best opportunity. I still think someone's coming off the building. I just wonder who. (laughs) I will just say this. I wouldn't mind if uh, Alistair Black black masses somebody off the building. Jesus. (laughs) Just saying. I mean, it would be a cool spot to see. Granted, we're also we're also assuming that that happens in this match. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it, it's you can be very oh, flexible. Not, everything, with this. Else is, everything else is happening at the at the center, right? And then these these are pre recorded at yes. the place. Yes. Everything else yeah. is else. Oh, okay. So it's got to happen in this match. Yeah. So I think they well, can be, they can be very all flexible. Of our, all of our questions will be answered later today. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, they will. Um, with that said, do we have any uh, closing remarks about Money in the Bank? Uh, I, I'm gearing up for at least half of a good show. I'm just hoping if I'm watching this and someone's mother happens to walk in on me watching this, I hope they can enjoy the show with me. <laughs> I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs> yeah, we'll just have to see what happens. So, um it's I think the money in the bank match while they go on at the same time, this is either going to be very memorable or it's going to be horrible. It's going to be one of the two, but we'll have to see. So, uh with all that said, guys, there you go. We just previewed Money in the Bank. Let us know in the comment section below who you guys think will walk away as the winners of each and every match. Um once again, on behalf of Dan the Man, the Commission myself, uh we invite everybody to in these trying times to stay home and stay safe, and we will catch you all. Next time.